So this class tonight is in honor of the Pigeon of Ben, of Ben Chayel, and uh, it's really, really an honor to celebrate this occasion with you, Baruch Hashem. You know, today, this is the first time in my life I've been I have going to two Pigeon of Ben's in one day. One, one gentleman who was also past the age of our mitzvah told me today he needs to have a Pigeon of Ben. He now to delay Pigeon of Ben. Mm-hmm. For, uh, for for until the next day, you have to do it immediately. Right. It's, it's, like, it's like the mitzvah film has to be done immediately. So uh, double double blessing mm-hmm. today, Baruch Hashem in our synagogue. Mm-hmm. Double is a good thing. Like of course we're all for the two state solution, right? Double double two state, right? Two state. No, you know the two state solution. Two state solution like this: the Jews need to have two states: the state of Israel and the state of California. Two state solution. <laughs> It's a joke. Okay, so <laughs> this week we're reading the story of Yosef Atzadik of Joseph, and the story is a thriller. It's an action-packed story. Joseph is beloved by his father, and then he gets sold by his brothers. He goes into slavery. I want to zero in tonight on one exchange, which. If you look at it, the first time you read it, you don't notice anything unique about it. But considering the fact that the Torah is so exact and everything the Torah, the word Torah means instruction, you really get something incredible from, from, this, uh, from, this, from these words in the Torah. Joseph is sold, sold and he's accused of a crime he didn't commit, right? And he's accused of a crime he didn't commit. And then what happens is, no, we just did told you the peanut bench you come again to the for the for the share. So 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 if, if you need to go give it to him as a as a matana so he could uh, use it as a Yeah. Okay, so With Yosef in the prison, there is the baker and the butler, also accused of crimes. They're accused, according to some opinions, of, of an act of treason, of, of uh, trying to kill, trying to assassinate the Pharaoh. And Joseph is with him in the prison. And Joseph says to them, one morning he sees that they're upset, he sees that something's wrong, he looks at their face, and he says, he says the Torah says, he says to those... To the Pharaoh's chamberlains who are with him in the prison, he says to them, Why are your faces sour today? Why are you down today? That's the that's the words I want to focus on today. Look carefully at those words. Joseph says to the chamberlains which are with him in the prison. We know they're with him in the prison. The Torah introduced us to them before. And yet here the Torah again tells us that Joseph is talking to the Pharaoh's servants who are with them in the prison. Why if the Torah could have just said, Joseph said to them, you know who they are, and yet the Torah describes again that they're with Joseph in the prison. What's the reason for that, uh, for this description? Bigger question. Joseph is in the prison with them, and they have a sour face. Is there a question why their faces are sour? They're in jail. Why are we sad? Why are we upset? You know, at a, at a shiva house, God forbid, you're not supposed to ask the mourner, how are you? You're not supposed to ask how you're feeling. I remember I was once at a shiva house, and someone made the mistake of asking the mourner, so how are you doing? Because he hadn't seen each other for such a long time. So how are you doing? And <laughs> the response was, um, how do you think I'm doing? You know, God forbid. So, um, so the question is, what is Joseph, it sounds like a very facetious question. How are you doing? Why are you sad? Why, of course they're sad. Why, is there any reason not to be sad? What, what's his question? So, so, so there are many different, and all the commentaries are bothered by the extra words in the, over here and the whole question that Joseph is asking them. And let's go to, through two different perspectives to this question. First of all, let's, let's hear what Ram, Samson Rafal Hirsch says about this. He says that here, the Torah is highlighting Joseph's attention to detail. Joseph didn't just see them as 
as just fellow people with him in prison, he noticed, hey, who they were. They're, they're, they're only in prison now. They're, they're prisoners, which means that they're not going to be here forever. They've just been put in prison. That means that there is some... Shalom uh, Aleichem Yechil. Okay. Before we continue, we have a, to do our celebration with our with Yechil, who's going to perform the uh, Ping Naben. Okay. So, okay. Gagi. The gentleman. The is worth like the fasting 84 fasts. All right. Actually? Yeah. Like, like, like how long fast? 84 fasts. 84 fasts. 84 fasts. As if you fast 84 times. No way. This is a good investment. We have to eat. Do I have to? Yeah. If, if you want to get the 84 fast. Does it count if I eat before? But isn't bricks like a thousand fasts? Yeah, okay. So this is how, so, so first of all, you need to have, you need to have five cella. So five, the worth of a uh, hundred and, and uh, 103 grams. Right. You got that? This is uh, about 116. Okay, we're doing great. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, you want, want to give him a present? <laughs> 120 grams. Yeah, you have more over there too? Yeah. So it's better to, better, better to use uh, whatever we have. Because right. at the minute, we'll have to put the baby in the plate to put, the, put, the, put, the, put a lot of uh, jewelry. How much is that worth? All right. Now. Uh, so he, he, he now. Put jewelry function. <laughs> no. So is he borrowing this? Mm-hmm. He's not borrowing this, right? It has to be his. So give him a maratana. So, uh, we'll you want to borrow, buy it? Bitcoin? Uh, <laughs> but but, but, but let, let, let's, let's make a transaction. That's the real deal. So, 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 Okay. Uh, okay. But but those coins are fake. I don't know. Pick, 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 all of them. Lift them all up. Okay. All right. Lift them, lift them high, man. Look, look, look like you mean it. All right. There we go. Okay. We're doing good. All right. Do you know, do you know, do you know why the gentleman is here tonight? Explain to him why you're here. Because I need yes. to be redeemed. Okay. <laughs> so, in order to be redeemed, well, we, we need to do this act of. You need to, you need to more shine your light. So are we live? Let's do it. All right. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, you're going to uh, say the brachas, and then you're going to give him the money, and you Ukraine are going to have a drink. You're going to say a lot. Okay. So I'm going to sit in the grape juice over there, please. I got to go to bed. For, for, oh, so you want some wine? Five thirty tomorrow for the learning. Oh. Watch out. Don't bribe me with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. Let me see the coins. Closer. Okay. Can I ask the coin and the baby to please stand? <laughs> you the baby. Oh, the baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Please pick up the. Please pick up your coins. All, all, all the Rabbi, is it? Sh- is it live? It's live. It's one, one Should we videotape it? Can you? Can you like, no, no, that, 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 that's on my phone. Five years. So, Michael, you're going to redeem yourself now, okay? You're ready. All right. First, you say the bracha and you get the coin of money. Baruch. 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 Amen. Amen. Okay, great. Mazel to 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 Mazel to
the coin does the coin have to say stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's only uh, if, if do it a little bit. The father? Uh-huh. If you give him a Birkos Kohani? If, if the father does it himself, then, then we do it that way. But if you're, doing it, if, if you're redeeming yourself, then you, 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 you can say the, the language of... Did you mind now? My, my, my wife gave birth to a child. Doesn't work. Right. I'm flying back from you now. Oh. I know, you don't have to sell it if you don't want to. You don't have to sell it if you don't want to. You don't have to. Okay. We're getting back to our. Uh, if you want to. It's your money. Okay, so. Getting back to our questions of before that we asked. First of all, Ishkayach Gagi. Very, very appreciated. What's it? Well, it's something kosher. The Suda. I had so I had like I was about to go to bed. <laughs> I was in bed. I was like. Eighty four pass. Oh, it doesn't count if I don't eat. It, it counts, but but you should still eat something. Eat something. They're not gonna eat something. Yeah, just like be part of it. Yeah, eat something at least. Adam. Amen. Okay. <laughs> so, getting back to the Samson or Fall Hirsch, so he was saying that Yosef, what Yosef was doing was, Not Yosef, he wasn't just asking questions. You see from the kind of question that he asked, the way Tur- Tur- describes the question, that he knew exactly who he was talking to, he knew what was going on, he knew that they may have been pri- in prison now, but they're not always going to be in prison. He knew that they're with them, they're also accused of a crime, they're still under investigation, and it's possible that they'll be able to save him, they'll be able to help him. So his question to them was, the way, he was he was cognizant of who they were and what's going on. It, it was, the, the Torah emphasizes the place they were in and the people that they were to tell us that Yosef's question was connected to their to his circumstances. He wasn't just asking a random question. He was thinking that these people, by divine providence in his heart, maybe they're the key to his getting out of the pit. He, he, he felt that there must be some reason why he's there. That's, the, that's, the, the, that's what Samson and Fall Hirsch says. The Barbanel, he gives a different explanation. He says like this. He says, Yosef is in the prison. What's his job? His job is to attend to all the prisoners. Now, not every prisoner needs different things. Some prisoners, every prisoner needs to have their bed made. Every prisoner needs to eat food. But people which are of a higher rank in the government, they need better care. So Yosef sees that they're upset today, more upset than usual. So Barbanel says what he's, his problem, what he was thinking was, perhaps he didn't attend to them properly because they are in a high rank. Maybe their bed wasn't made in the way that they would expect their bed to be made. Maybe they were... Thank you, Achil. Thank you. So the Barbanel is, in other words, Barbanel is saying Yosef was worried about his own, his own position. He was worried maybe perhaps that he didn't... Uh, he, he didn't do the right, he didn't take care of them properly. So his question to them was for self-preservation. That's what Barbanel says. So both the Barbanel and the first explanation are both viewing this, Joseph's question, that it's all, it's all self-centered. Either he's asking them because he thinks they have the key to him getting out of prison, or he's asking them because he thinks that by asking them, he's going to, um, you, won't get, you won't get fired. <laughs> it's not a question of getting fired. He won't get punished. For consequences for not taking good care of the prisoners properly. That's what he says. But you don't like that explanation. No, he's excited. Well, just because it's tight doesn't mean that he's not supposed to supposed to view maybe Hashem sent this maybe he's supposed to He saw a person who was down and he wanted to see if he could help. That's all. Oh, okay. So he's saying a tzaddik, a tzaddik has to be, has to be some, since he's a tzaddik, everything he actually does is true. It has to be deeper. We're going to see about that. I want to, before we do, I want to tell you an amazing story about Chaim of Tzans. Rabbi Chaim of Tzans, um, he was once, he saw a Jew who, need, who needed help. So he told one of the members of his community, hey, we got to go around, we got to ask for tzedakah, for this guy, he's in trouble. Let's ask people to help him out. So the guy told Rabbi Chaim of Tzans, I'm really busy right now. I have a lot of Torah to study. You know, I, I have so much to do. I, I, I haven't finished this, this book of Talmud I really need to finish, so I can't do it. The Chaim Tzahn says, let me tell you, tell you something. In this week's Torah portion, we find that Joseph is lost in the field, and he meets a man. Who is the man? The, one, some opinions say he was Malach Gavriel. Some, no one says that, but some, except for you. And some opinions say he was Malach, Malach uh, Gavriel. Some people say he was Malach Rafael. 
an angel, a wonderful angel. And in last week's Torah portion, we find that J- Jacob is wrestling with a man. Who is the man? It's a bad, bad man. It's, it's angel of Esau. Angel of Esau. How come the word man means someone bad in last week's Torah portion, and the word man means something something good in this week's Torah portion? What was the word? Same exact word. Same exact word. Ish. So Bechayim Tzan says like this, as you look at the context, what happened last week's Torah portion? Joseph turns to the angel and he says, please, 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 please give me a blessing. What does the angel say? I'm sorry, I'm busy. I got to go sing songs to God. Ah, must be the angel of Esau. Must be something bad. If someone says they're so busy, they can't even t- help out someone, else, someone when they need help, that, 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 that's a different kind of man. Unlike, unlike this week's Torah portion, Joseph's lost. Someone says to him, hey, what do you need? That's an angel. So that's what Chaim Sanz told this guy, oh, you're so busy, you have to study Torah? The kind of man that you are. All right, moving right along. So Ramasi bin Kharash, he says that you're supposed to always... Who says? Ramasi bin Kharash. Ramasi bin Kharash says, whenever you meet somebody, you have to always greet them first. You meet somebody, you always have to say hello and how are you before they, they, they greet you. You have to greet them first. Rabbi Yechem and Zakkai said about Rabbi Yechem and Zakkai that he knew the entire Torah. He knew, every, he knew the deepest secrets of the Torah. He knew the simple laws of the Torah. He knew the, 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 the language of the angels, knew the language of the demons. There was nothing that he didn't know. And yet... Wow, where was he from? He was lived about the time of the destruction of the Second Temple. Oh. Rabbi Yechem and Zakkai, he never, ever said hello to somebody second. He always said it first. Even if he met someone not from our tribe, not from our faith, in the marketplace, he was always first. No one ever said hello before him. That's, so you can't say, well, the Medir Shmuel says, don't say that, uh, what you know, if somebody was, uh, lower caliber than you, walk, then you don't deserve, you should maybe respond to you, maybe you should just respond to them if they speak to you, but you don't have to go out and seek their welfare. We learn from Yechem and Zakai, says in Masbih Chenesh, that you always have to be the first one. Don't be every second. That's, that's the first teaching. But uh, this, this goes, goes further than that. It's not about, it's not just about saying it first. The uh, Gemara says, the Mishnah says, that Shammai says, you should greet everybody with Sever Panam Yafis. Don't just say hello to them, greet them with a pleasant countenance. The word Sever comes from the word Svara. Svara. Is logic. Is, did, did you ever start it? Hmm? What can we say? Mm-hmm. Don't want to go, so don't want to... Okay. Now, the word sever means it comes from the word svara. Svara logic. means logic. Very good. So, Why not today? Any very good. Excellent. I'm sure you got a, got, got a good mark on your final line. Excellent. So, so, so the idea of save upon of yafas means it's similar to the English word face. Face means it comes to the word facade. So people look, people look a certain way, but not necessarily is that how they feel. So Shammai says, greet everybody with Savior, Panam Yafos, it means greet people, and your face should give the message of positivity. Your face should be something that, that makes them feel good. doesn't matter how you feel inside, your face should always portray like things are good. That's what Shammai says. But the Gemara says that Bishmol says, the Mishnah says that Bishmol goes further. He says, don't just greet people with Savior, Panam Yafos. What does he say? Greet people with Simcha, with joy, with happiness. But what's the, uh, what's the key to actually being able to do that? Sometimes, if you just said people to smile, you can always force a smile. Sometimes, some, some people, they, they may get, uh, they may have to, like, you know, <laughs> may crack, crack some bones and they make a smile. But, but, but you can always force a smile at some expense. But what does Uri Shmuel mean when he says, always greet people with happiness? So Medrash Shmuel says an amazing thing. There's three teachings of Uri His three te- teachings are, is be affable, to uh, the dark one, be uh, yielding to a leader, and greet people with joy. Affable to the dark one in the literal sense means young people need a little more positivity. Be affable to them. Be friendly to them. Be yielding to a leader means someone who is your leader, so you work for somebody, be yielding to them. You can't be a little flexible. But there's deeper meaning. Manager Shmuel says be, be affable to the dark one means, means the dark times in life. People, it's a euphemism. It means times are hard. Realize that if it's, something's happening to you, it's by Hashem's will, and therefore must be good. Be yielding to the leader means the leader of the world, to God. 
And that will, by realizing whatever is happening to you is, is happening to you is by divine providence, that will give you the strength to realize that it's that it's good and it's for a purpose, and that will give more joy in your heart to greet people with genuine simcha. So that's what Medish Shmuel says. About 90 seconds, I'll let you do eventually say. Okay, the, 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 the Ramban says that Yosef displayed incredible chutzpah, incredible gall, going over these people and asking them, hey, why can't you just, uh, why are you guys so sad? Who is Yosef? He's a little kid. These guys are ministers in Paro's court, and he's going to tell them what to do. They were in the same level when they were in prison. There was no higher lord. That's what you think. The Ram Nachmanri says that they were they were they were top ministers of Parah. Yosef was Yosef. Okay, son of Yaakov. So that's what the Ramban says. It, 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 it expressed Yosef's strength. But listen, to the Rebbe says the Rebbe says what Yosef was doing was like this. Think about it. Where is Yosef coming from, Yisrael? He was sold by his brothers. His brothers were so mean to him. They didn't take just take away. They didn't just start up with him, take away his kindle or something. They threw him in a pit and they sold him. So he had every reason to be full of anger at everybody in the world. He's the only one. He had a horrible child and is the only one in Tanakh that's called Ishma Sleach. Right, so Wow, that's interesting. He's, he had the most problem. He's still called the man of success. Is that your own, the only person that, is that your own teaching? From our regret. Like, look, very nice. Hey, that's not fair. That's the rabbi's kid. That's not fair. That's cheating. He didn't get it. Rabbi's kid. He said Yosef had the hardest life, and yet he's called the man of success. The only person. The only person the Torah calls as a successful person is Yosef. The only one. The only one. Ish So, so the Rebbe says like this. It's coming to Hanukkah now. What's Hanukkah about? Hanukkah is about it's light lighting up the darkness. That you're in a situation and it's dark, and you realize as a Jew, what is your role here? You realize to give light to the darkness. That's Yosef. Yes, it's like he's in the prison. And he's okay, sorry, before the uh, phone died. So I'm going to just finish the answer to our question before. Why did Yosef ask the butler and the baker, how come your faces are sour today? It would seem a very facetious question. When they're in prison, of course, they're sad. Rabbi Yochanan says... It's better to give someone a smile than a cup of milk. As the Torah says, it's better... Is that your bedtime story? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should turn this off now. He's <laughs> giving a Torah class. He's giving a Torah class like on Facebook. Maybe you should read it. Watch this one because it's live. You're in it. <laughs> anyway, so getting, oh, really? <laughs> getting back to Yosef. So... He was asking them how come they were, um, why, their fate, why were they so sad? Yosef, even though he was in prison, he, he didn't look at himself as being in prison. He may have a real challenge, but he didn't feel alone. He felt that he was there for a purpose. He felt that God sent him there. And it didn't matter who it was, but he couldn't figure out why anyone could possibly be sad. Because after all, Wherever you are, there's a reason, there's a purpose, and and he didn't, and he knew that he had to be there to inspire others as well. And therefore, when someone had a sad face, Joseph, hey, what's going on? What's wrong? And this is very in sync with the upcoming holiday of Hanukkah, where the theme of Hanukkah is giving, putting light, and transforming the darkness to light. It's the Torah is telling us how powerful it is to raise someone's spirits and if someone's sad how a positive word and care can really lift them up. Amen.